Real radio? Uh, no, fake, it's not fake radio. Of radio. podcasting again. Uh, yes, um, fake radio. The only people yeah. listening are, uh, is Alan. Alan's here. Oh, wait a minute. Can you are see? You it? Alan, you can you go to the bathroom now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can there. see him. But, right. you know, why isn't he like a pretty girl? <laughs> hey, I got that beautiful Catholic hair there, so there you go. Drop and just wave it around. Do that. Look at me. Do your hair, Alan. Are they ever? Are they ever pretty girls? At least not with this stuff. Uh, uh, no well, comment. Oh. <laughs> Have you seen some of these cosplayers? Oh my god. I, you know, I gotta get out of my basement. More I often. married a cosplayer. <laughs> Is you oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. the dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, we have. Hey! Uh, Hello, everybody! This is Rob Bruce. Rob, Rob Bruce. Rob Bruce. I'm swiping Ming's intro. Uh, <laughs> Hello, everybody! <laughs> and welcome to. Where, where are we? West Hempstead, New York. <laughs> I have no idea. I got really going. confused. <laughs> I made a left instead of making a right, and I went into like some really swanky area. Oh, jeez. And the road changed, but you know that's the life on the road. Like every weekend, we're yeah. somewhere. You know, you got to go set up. We're at the Far Side uh, Custom Figure Convention, the first one. Really interesting. Uh, I think it's got great potential. Yeah. Very uh, interesting dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and personally, I'm a big. Uh, not, well, I get some custom figures, but I'm more of a knockoff figure collector. You, right, right, knockoff figure. And collector. you can tell, and you, and you can tell yeah. knockoffs, and you can. I look for knockoffs. You look for knockoffs. Yeah, that's yeah, got, yeah. That's, cannot be easy. Uh, no, but it's a lot more fun than seeing. Uh oh, just cut up. Hello, oh. check one, two. You know what? You I, have, if you hold on to this, you might have. To I get electrocuted. Work. Yeah, <laughs> so good. We are so bootlegged here. Can that, you hear that is, us? That is pretty bootlegged. Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> no. I've fallen into the well. Hey, you like bootleg, right? Well, I love bootleg. We're, we're giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is as bootleg as you're gonna get. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, I, I've been collecting, uh, I've been collecting toys since. Approximately 1985. Okay. That's really when I got into it. And, you know, I was buying uh, Thundercats off the shelf. Nice. That's how long ago. Yeah. So what's, your, what's your focus now? Overall, what was your favorite? Toy-wise? Yeah. I mean, I, I really like are everywhere. I really right? like uh, Tiger Sharks. Tiger Sharks? Really? Tiger Sharks. That's, that's got to be insane. Those are the greatest yeah. toys ever made. Wow. I've, you know, I've only seen pictures of them. Yeah. Like, I've owned them all so carded and... I have a, uh, almost a complete set now, loose. Wow. They got too expensive to keep on the, you know, to hold on to. So yeah. I, I had to get rid of them. Yeah. That's the other thing. I much prefer to collect uh, loose figures as opposed yeah. to carded ones. Primarily because they display better. You, know, you can put a shelf full of 50, 60, 100 figures. But, you know, I, so I collect, uh, been collecting a lot of knockoffs primarily because I bought and owned every legit figure produced since 1985, 84, even going back into the 70s with Amigos. Wow. But um, you know, and then I, I'm into Japanese vinyl figures. I've got a lot of those, and into the the new custom art stuff. You, you know, know, I'm killing myself because I have this I have this uh, vinyl Godzilla figure from like '78, '79. Not vinyl; it's like rubbery. In, inside, it's got that um, that metallic skeleton. It's about four inches. Really? And I thought, oh, look, I should yeah. bring it to him because he might know what it is. But metallic skeleton? No, not not, not a metallic. Bendy? It's a wire. It's a bendy wire. wire. Oh, a wire. A Ben yeah. Cooper. About Five inches tall. Yes. Yeah. Really stupid look on his face. Yes. Yeah, it's a Ben Cooper figure. Look at this, right off the top. You wow, don't even wow. need the figure. That was impressive. That was impressive. impressive. <laughs> How long have you been doing shows? Uh, I went to my first convention, uh, Creation Con, in 1975. Wow. And I was Shit. like, same year I saw uh, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Oh my God! So, so I was a was freshman, the, freshman in high school, freshman sophomore in high school. Finally, I someone on this stadium. podcast who's older than me. <laughs> Dude, I'm older than than cheese. Yeah, yeah, but no, that is a great age to be to be able yeah. to do that. Yeah, it's funny because you know we used to go to the garden all. I grew up in Red Bank. You know, everybody yeah. knows that I'm yeah. on the Secret Stash show, and the Secret Stash is in Red Bank, New Jersey. But I'm actually from Red Bank. I was born there. The whole backstory with me walking in and looking at stuff is. Is a legit story. It's just ironic that you know I'm one of these better-known toy collectors, which just happened by surely, purely by accident yeah. and attrition. I mean, certainly it's got to do with attrition. But I've worked with you know I, some of the top uh, companies, Hates Americana. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're pretty big. Uh, they were bought by uh, Kepi's, and they do a, a monthly auction. But in the late '80s, '90s, I used to work with Ted Hake. And I'm actually in the 93 Overstreet uh, 
price guide on serial premiums and premium rings. You know, oh, wow. as wow. as one of the contributing uh, wow. experts or or uh, editors. Nice. So you know, well, I've got you're you're known as an expert, and you've uh, and you've definitely pro have proven it. Yeah, well, that just means I don't remember people's names. <laughs> so is this what you always wanted? Is this what no. you saw yourself? Of course, like, you know, you know what? I want to be. It's so ironic, company. you know, and, and, and you know, I went to the, those those early or late '70s shows when I was a kid, and then I, I stumbled around in the Lower East Side, and, and you know, most people are aware that I had a, a drug and alcohol issue as a, as a late teen and into my early uh, Didn't we all? yeah early twenties. And I snapped out of that. I had been riding a bike as a bike messenger, and I started working for Printing House, and I developed uh, uh, clients. So I worked with Sotheby's and Christie's and Museum of Modern Art and, and Metropolitan Museum of Art as, as, as client side, and really got me interested in the history of things in general. So you know that sort of bounces really oddly into toys and pop culture, but that's where it came from because I was collecting American art pottery. And you know, I bought a tin toy in like 1985, and it turned out to be worth like two thousand dollars. And I paid fifty bucks for it, and then like a light went off in my head, and then I just sort of ran that race, and I've been collecting ever since. Wow. And wow, and for me, it's not you collecting it to own for for value is not what it's ever been about. It's always about learning about what things are and where they come from. So to go into like knockoffs, and I have knockoffs of knockoffs. Of knockoff toys. So you're kind of like an archaeologist. You're a toy well, pop I, 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 I'm a sociologist. A pop culturist is a sociologist. You know, and and I loosely have coined that term myself. You know, uh, Kevin always calls it pop culturist, but I will, you know, or whatever he calls it. But I, I think that's what it is. It's social, you know, archaeology is in studying the popular culture of its time. We're just living in this moment. That's regurgitating the 80s because the average guy who goes out or gal goes out to buy stuff is 32, 33 years old. That's exactly. 20 years ago. And this is a big cycle. And it's been yeah. going on. When I first got into it, the 60s were huge. Now the 60s are kind of soft, except for you know the superhero toys and the robots and the really intricate, expensive things are always being intricate and expensive. But uh, you know it's a full circle, and I'm very thankful and and, and scratch my head all the time. To the point where you know I'm just I'm really a, a geek collector. I mean I was in the stamp club in fifth grade. Stamps, oh, there you go. stamps. You know, <laughs> you want to? I, I they used to play kill the man with a ball at school. You know, yeah. you know what I'm talking yep. about? Yep. I was a ball. <laughs> I, was a, I was a fastest kid on the field, so I ran track. I grew up as a stamp and coin collector, like nice. most people. And just one thing segued into the other comic books. And I remember buying my first comic book, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 101. And just, you know, I've been fortunate to be around right people at the right time, and everything sort of blew up. I mean, whole the whole convention scene, you know, it's called, ebbed and flowed, and I've been to 800 conventions. Wow. I went to uh, my first San Diego in 93. Wow. Really? Yeah, I've been, oh, been to every New York, you know, just because I just was in C2E2 last week in Chicago. Yeah, we saw the pictures. And so, you know, yep. we're here, and this is great because this is America. Yeah. Yeah. You know. My friend Alex. How you doing? You Hi, Alex. It takes Hi, Alex. Alex. Six hours to get here. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, he's only an hour and a half away, or not even. What are you? Fifteen minutes away. She's gotta work late, so you got off work. At least she's working, so you don't have to. <laughs> so, so uh, God bless America. So, uh, so you know, so they. And most people ask me like how I got on the stash show, and I used to walk through the store all the time to get coffee. I park my car for free and walk through and go to Starbucks across the street. And as I was walking through, Walt would ask me questions. And it was my pull store. So, you know, I have this relationship. And one day, you know, uh, Mike Sapsic said, hey, wait a second. You're using this place as an alley, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and it was true. I was using the store as an alley. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when this the show sort of just appeared, you know, they were working on the Tell em Steve Dave show. And they couldn't yeah. do that because of Q. And you know uh, the relationship between Q, Brian Q from the Practical Jokers, and uh, Brian Johnson is really old. Most people don't know that, oh, you know, wow, no. because because Q was uh, Kevin's uh, intern when he was 19. Oh wow! And 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 he harassed mm -hmm. Kevin to the point where he was the guy who went into like Barnes and Noble. It was some famous story where he yelled at somebody, and Kevin caught wind of it, and they made him an intern, and he had literally worked. Under uh, Brian Johnson, at that point, where Brian is probably 24 years old, it's 20 years ago. So there's this whole big circle of the connection between the Tenderloins and 
the Tell Em Steve Daves and, and the stash. But they couldn't do the Tell Em Steve Dave show. They needed to, because he was doing Impractical Jokers, yeah. just got signed. So, you know, Kevin was looking for a comic book store to run this comic book concept on, and he realized he owned a store, and he had these guys already working in there, and one thing led to another. So I was actually called up by Walt to come in and do an audition at a left field. Like right. one day, you need to come in, these people are here, come in and do an audition. So I actually sat down for 15 minutes and talked for 55 minutes. And <laughs> he said, oh, this is great, this is great. Ah. So we did this, uh, the sizzle reel, which is a pitch reel, and we shot a third of it in my house. Oh, real? Yeah, because wow. Brian and Vin came over looking for this book. And it was kind of loosely what we do now. Obviously now it's more refined because yeah. right. we have five seasons. And uh, we're looking, you know, we know what to do. It's, yeah, it's a, a well-old machine. It's yeah. a box, yeah. and it's a well-old machine. And, and you know, I'm one of the producers on the show. Most people aren't aware of that. I'm the yeah, consulting producer. Uh, I've been actually a producer since season two. Hey, I can barely hear myself. <laughs> What's with Italian? So I thought you guys were supposed to talk like this. Talk with your hands, not your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my kids are Italian. Before you shoot me, you know. <laughs> before you shoot me, that's the joke. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so, so they did the whole thing, and just one thing led to another, and here we are today. But it's been great because yeah. you know, as a producer, I get to work behind the scenes. Most people ask me why I'm not on the, more, the show more, but I'm on the show as much as I've always been on. I yeah. usually mm -hmm. shoot like two A stories and four transactions. And they air five of those pieces, and I'm probably going to be on this weekend. And we're in the middle of, uh, or the ending of the second half of season five. And no, it's from behind. And <laughs> as far as I know, and knock on wood, it's not official. You can't get it, this information from me, but everything looks really positive for season six. Awesome. Okay, so right. the numbers have been great. Um, at one point, we, we 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 trend so high in our demographics that we're like we were top eight all of Sunday one day. Oh wow. You know, and most people, oh, you're on at midnight. Nobody watches it. We're, we got a million viewers at midnight. at midnight. And your viewership watches is, is, at that hour. And not only that, they watch the whole show. So they look at things like, oh, well, they're not watching the whole show. No, yeah. no, you know, they no, bounce I around. Watch, no, but, I watch from beginning to end. Well, it's 22 minutes long, too. Yeah. So well, if, I, if, you go, if you go to the bathroom, you miss that. That's the other thing. says, well, it's okay. short. Yeah, it's 22 minutes. That's, actually, that's, that's not that. short. That's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DVR, it's yeah. Well, a lot of people DVR, yeah. but so you know, it's 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 got its time slot. Uh, Kevin's people, our people like it. Um, you know, AMC has now like pitched. They're pitching another show with Kevin, doing wow. like a like a late Great. night talk show that's out in the open. Oh, nice. And they they literally uh, yesterday they redid the front window of the stash. So now if you go into it, it's all comic book then. It says a comic book men wow. window. So for me to think, that, oh, there's no six season. Wait a second, they just spent four thousand yeah. dollars. What? <laughs> so, so it's been great, you know. And yeah. it's one of those, you know, dream jobs. Uh, I'm from Red Bank. I was born in Red Bank. I live in Red Bank. My kids go to the Red Bank public school system. I literally oh, ride my, my Stingray to, to work, you know. Nice. Wow. Like an old freaking like that, that's a ridiculous picture, but that's true. <laughs> You used, you used to have a store over there, Yeah, I did. Right? The Groove Spot, yeah. And our motto was, tell your ladies where the G-Spot is. Me and uh, my buddy Gil met you up in Northern Boulevard at James D. Simone's show. Oh, hey, Jimmy. Ah. Yeah, I was talking about in, in the uh, the Hooker Hotel. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Me and Gil. How long ago was that? 80? Oh, man. That was, 90. It had to be like 90s. 90. No, it was Mid 2000, early 2000. Yeah, because I ran the store for well, until my second son was born. So we've been yeah. closed for almost... Uh, Ten years, I think. Yeah. 10, yeah, ten years. I remember, and me and Gilly met you there, and we were like, "Man, you're like, yeah, I got a store." And I'm like, I, "I'm only, I was only in Old Bridge at the right. time." So, all oh, right, did you come down? Yeah, I came Crazy, down. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, talk about clusterfuck. You had an awesome store. Yeah, you had, had everything. Records up top, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, records right? along and the then, wall. Then I had yeah. uh, Chris Star Castles and yeah. Black Star wow. Castles. Oh, before I Ford like, Max in the box up top. Yeah, yeah I Ford Max. In the I box. actually went to your store, but it was just at. I think it must be just after you closed. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there was still stuff inside, but um, not open. Yeah, yeah. It was a sort of a painful thing, but you know, you yeah. gotta do what you gotta do. Well, yeah. I gotta say, I met you for the first time because I used to see you in New York shows all the time. Um, back in 2001, I, I'm a really big Joe collector now. I've been right. collecting G.I. Joe since 2001. And actually, the first two figures I bought was a Destro and a Duke from you. Wow, it's crazy. All right, and I actually remember that because the so thing about you is, is it's not that you're 
It's not that you're that good looking. <laughs> All right? But I talk. <laughs> you're sexy, man. Don't let them don't you, let you know what? You're, you're mad cool and approachable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, you know, and, you, and you did one thing, though, that really stuck to me. Um, you, do you remember doing a Big Apple show right after September 11th? Yes. Um, yeah. Remember there was an asshole that shouted out the Iron Sheet? Uh, did I did I go after him? You went after him. Yeah, I like the Iron Sheet. You went after the guy for saying something really yeah, obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. Iron Sheet is from Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I just that always yeah. stuck with me. So when I saw I have a reputation for like yelling at people. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy who actually it was not even that long ago. The guy guy actually conned my kid into like he basically stole from my son who was managing the table and I called him and I jumped up on the table and I was yelling at the top of my lungs, Shame on you <laughs> Shame 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 <laughs> but sometimes you don't think. Yeah. That's my problem. It's like, whoa, that, he just act. I can get away with this. <laughs> I mean, it's a seventeen, you know, seventeen-year-old head and a fifty-year-old body. I can yeah. fight anybody. Come on, that's it. You, you know what? And that's exactly what came out. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. I mean, you know, I don't, you know, and I've always believed that, you know, people are people, and you need to treat everybody equally, and it doesn't make any difference who's rich, who's poor, yeah. who's like good the looking, guy, who isn't. The guy was just there trying to, you know, he was just trying to sell his pictures. Yeah, I was like, she. He, he was, was a, a little crazy. He's like, he's a little crazy. I mean, I didn't know he was that crazy then. Like, yeah. I didn't know now. Was he doing the exercise? He was doing the exercises and all that. It was, yeah. He, he had, yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, it was. We grew up with the sheep. I grew up with the sheep, and that whole thing—it right. was old WWE. Okay? And it's all it, it was, fake. It's all right. fake. Yeah. I mean, it's and wrestling's me. fake. If anybody didn't know that out there, I'm with you right now. Wrestling what? is not real. <laughs> but I said, but Unless it's just... Tuesday night at my house. <laughs> Oil. Oil. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> hey, you're listening to this, honey. Yeah. That's right. I'm sleeping on the couch. Good thing Bale in here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you um so you you do shows anything yeah you have well you know up outside of us uh, the secret stash um I, well I'm working on things I can't announce anything obviously but I've been like helping produce a uh, don't worry it's only the four of us a, a, a <laughs> Netflix <laughs> Netflix thing that oh cool. hopefully will get sold um you know we we shot a pilot for spinoff but then uh, AMC dissolved themselves of the unscripted department and I'm still a contracted you know. I'm actually have an entertainment contract with AMC, so I've got one more year on that. This is a sixth season, so we'll see what happens. Obviously, people keep on pitching things. I was in uh, Chicago last week, and one of the reasons was to meet with uh, an A and E rep on a certain show that they're developing. And you know, you sign all these uh, contracts that say you'll never talk about anything. So I can't talk about it beyond yeah. that. But yeah. just so keep th our eyes. There's out. always something in the work, but you know, in reality, I never expected to be on television. Right. Maybe cops. Yeah. <laughs> you know, season five. Oh, it's bad boy. <laughs> season five, episode two. Getting the tackled. drunk man, the third drunk man. <laughs> it's all fake, you know. They bring yeah, those people yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's just, it's so, it's just strange because you know, I have a certain amount of longevity that sort of kept me in the flow because I'm willing to learn about things and I understand that that the uh, demographics shift and a lot of people who aren't collectors or are understanding pop culture from a sociological point of view, you know, the, the timeline moves constantly. Yeah. That 32-year-old, everybody's 32 year old, years old for one year, and it just sort of flips around. That's why right now Power Rangers are so I popular. was just going to yeah. say Power Rangers. And, you know, I saw that coming down the road 10 years ago, and I've got tons of Power Rangers. Yeah. I wish I could get into the warehouse to get them, but I've got tons <laughs> of them. You know, but you know, the one thing I'm worried about is, like, you know, 20 years from now, what are people going to be collecting? Because right. we sort of saturated this pop culture phenom. To the point it's over after the 90s. I mean, are we going to be collecting, you know, Funko? Are we going to be collecting, you know, uh... Everything's nostalgia-based already. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I, think I, I think after the 90s, that's pretty much it. I agree with you on some degrees. I see some, like, you know, uh, light at the end of the tunnel, but, you know, it's like that, uh, what's the high school for ghosts and goblins? Oh, Monster High? Yeah, and stuff like yeah. that will have a follow. I don't know why I know that, everybody. And you know, oh, the, the you one, know it's pretty big, actually. Yeah, we not my cousin, it. my niece. But it's a, a female thing. Now, that's yeah. the other thing that's going to change is you're going to have a female-dominated or certainly a yeah. female-shared uh, marketplace in the future. Harry Potter will probably be the next big vintage thing based on the movies. I agree. It certainly has legs, and certainly Star Wars will continue, and yeah. the DC and Marvel franchises. But you know, we don't have like the Wheeled Warriors and the uh, Inhumanoids and the 
mask figures. And that's the thing that, that's, for me, has always kept me in the game. Yeah. Because yeah. it's so much weird shit. Man. Yeah. Just, yeah. Between the European and, and the international stuff. You've gone forever. Yeah. I mean, especially yeah. with the Transformers, the European Transformers. Those, all those action masters are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, they are. You know, for collectors out there, people want to get it skin in the game, just buy what you like. I mean, I don't think that Funko is a bad route to go if you're going to be a new collector. And maybe in some realm, Funko will keep the energy, the, the fire stoked. Yeah. Well, one thing I learned from the uh, mid, early to mid '90s is that if you're in this, you get rich. You're in the wrong. You're Absolutely. In the wrong totally. Absolutely. 100. percent I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't find incredible things. I bought a piece of Andy Warhol art once for a quarter. Wow. You know that happens, but you know what? You need to know everything to find those things. Right. And it's really hard to know everything. Lord knows I've tried. You know. <laughs> I get a headache. You know, I bought a piece of Acro glass yesterday at the flea market. I forgot what you said ten minutes ago. That's how bad yeah, my memory yeah. is. Well, my, <laughs> I mean, my you know, face is. I, it's funny. I've seen everybody so many times that I I know people. Yeah. I came in this morning. I don't know you. <laughs> and I know it was from the D Simone show, because I used to come out of here and I used to love it. He was a really interesting guy. Yeah. Yeah. He ran some great shows. That's where a lot of us met. You know, like a lot of us who have this crew together who've been known each other for ten years. We met there. For sure. I mean, that would have been the place. And it was so, those shows had so much energy. And it was just G.I. Joe's. Yep. And you yep. would fill up two rooms yep. with like 100, 200 people. They were great shows. Wow. Yeah. But everything goes full circle. I mean, you know, now that nowadays the 12-inch shows are dead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're dark. Well, the three three quarter inch, um, the A Ra eighty stuff is getting to that point. It's almost there. Yeah, but there's always, you know, you're always going to have that thousand dollar carded. You know, V1, Snake Eyes, yeah. eight, eight, five, graded. Mm. It's always going to be there, and that'll always anchor it. There's a lot of toy lines that don't have that benefit. Right. But I, I, why does 12 inch? How come 12 inch doesn't have that? Because guys are my age. Who wants oh, to admit they were kids age, yeah. and friggin' played with dolls? Yeah. I had one doll. I had one GI Joe when I was a kid. And I, I've never collected 12 inch. I've always collected three and three quarter, and I have a lot of three and three quarter. I probably have two, three hundred figures. I mean, I'm, oh, you know, wow. you know, all of them. Yeah. You know. Even too, I found the uh, Creator Cobra, the pink yep. one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yep. Yeah. That's like the rarest one out there. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> go find one for under two hundred fifty dollars. I bought a box of Schmegma, and in the bottom was that, <laughs> and, and the the gold and navy blue. Uh, Steel Brigade. Steel Brigade. Oh my God! It's yeah. Gold in one shot. Basically and, and perfect. Two Holy Grails. Nice. Yeah, two Holy Grails, probably yeah. the top ones, but you yeah. know. But so you get lucky, and that was like last year. It wasn't even like two oh, years what? ago. Yeah, like within within a year. Yeah. Last summer. Maybe you could have actually been October. I'm just thinking Wow. Guy had driven in with just a big box of shit. Like, you know, <laughs> freaking half of a uh, whale. You know how those boxes yeah. are. Yeah. And in the bottom is all this like, oh, hey, I know what all that the, is. All the swags in the bottom, the pink, right? Hey, look at this for girls. <laughs> That's why it didn't sell. Yeah. Well, they were both late 90s. Yeah, but that, I'm sorry, mid 90s. But anytime you make, anytime you make a pink people cobra, are not, the people are going yeah, like out of the what the heck? Kids I mean, go yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want this? I'm not ordering. That. <laughs> they should be a bunch of those somewhere. It should be some. I always thought about that. Unless they were they went up in a factory pile. They're, they're, they're they're factory factory somewhere. Somewhere. They did find the uh, stickers that somebody had a huge stash of the stickers that came with them. With a super game. Um, or the, the I'm sorry, the Creative Cobra. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Were, they were flooding the market well, for a little while. There. Yeah. yeah. I got lucky. I got the uh, the file card, the printout. I, I bought one. Tough piece. Uh, very yeah. tough piece. But, you know, it's, and that's what drives me because you can still find things. So every I'll be up tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. If you want to have coffee, take light, light, no sugar, Collingwood Flea Market. <laughs> no. I'll, be, I'll be the guy with a flashlight. <laughs> On Easter Sunday. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going out there because Toy, pagans. Pagans are Toys real. trump religion. Pagans. Oh, hey. <laughs> That's a shirt right there. there. Toy, <laughs> let's see, dude, hey, look, Toy, I'm sure God doesn't mind that I'm at the flea market. He's got other things to do. <laughs> Toys are religion, right? That's it. Toys are religion. You know, <laughs> and, and, and they can coexist. But, uh, you know, you got to have, you know, I love going to the flea market. It's a secret. 
And, is, and you hit New Jersey and... Yeah, uh, Collingwood, Columbus. I don't go to English Town. I do a lot of estate sales. I have, I have no idea what... I have no idea where all this place is. Well, Columbus is big. Columbus is like the biggest... One of the biggest uh, flea markets on the East Coast. Yeah. Really? It's off of 206 in Columbus, New Jersey. And pretty Not much, Ohio, right? No, okay. pretty much the whole town is a flea market. I mean, wow. it's It's on a good sa Sunday during the summer... Uh, 2,500 vendors, 15,000 people. How far away, roughly, from downtown Manhattan? Uh, oh, exit seven off the turnpike. That's a that's a really a little bit past me. Yeah, it's not not horribly far. I'm in North Brunswick. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're at eight, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You hop, oh, skip, wow. and the jump. You oh, get off. We you make, do that. You make the left. It's it's one of those things that you got to get there at like five. <laughs> yeah, we have to get there four turns. Because nothing's like before he gets there. <laughs> nothing like the sun doesn't help. It won't help you. <laughs> He's got that lock. Well, you know, it, it's all about direction, too. You yeah. need to stay focused. Yeah. And I'm Laser. on fire at 5 a.m. You know, my wife hates me. Cause, <laughs> that's why I go out. It's because she's doing me better. You know. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, you, uh, are you going to It's a Toy Show? It's a, Yes. Uh, when is that? Uh, May, I believe. The end of yeah, May. Yeah, end of May. Yeah, Frankie Moss is a great friend of mine. That, show, I, that I, store I, is awesome. Great store. Great, great man, store. Great show. I, I we love that show. Last year. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I missed last year because it coincided with something else. But he told me, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. <laughs> and free tables. Yeah, free tables. And, then, you know, and it's in the middle of freaking nowhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it's. I think it takes longer to get there than here. Yeah, it was like, what, two and a half hours from my point? Because I got to go. Yeah. You live in Jersey, right? Yeah. It's great. Because you got to go out around Fort Dix. And then 25 or 50 miles across it's, it's the street. It's crazy. You're driving so I just down, go down the road. And it's I go down like, the Garden State Parkway and make it right. But it's a, and then I'll be at Fair Point. You know Far Point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be at Far Point for, uh, all right. yeah, for Comic Book Day. So oh, nice. my schedule is like crazy. So next week I'm at, at uh, Saturday I'll be at Trenton Punk Rock Flea Market. Sunday I'll be at the Wayne Firehouse Show, which is the continue, longest continually going on, on show probably in the country. Wow. Been running every first Sunday of the month for 20 years. Then the wow. following week I'll be at Amazicon. And then the week after that I'm somewhere. And then hopefully I'll be take a day off. No days off, man. Huh? Uh, but that's the next <laughs> two weeks. That's a, no, I, that's I think a I'll, schedule. Yeah, but it's even worse because I know I'm working on the 22nd. I can't remember everything. <laughs> Just so much going on. So I usually uh, prime myself two weeks ahead. So I know the next two weeks. Nice. Do, you, uh, do you need an intern? Do you need a personal assistant? <laughs> I thought about it. Actually, I'm, I may end up I need somebody to sort shit. <laughs> I'm not get paid. He's your guy. Oh. <laughs> well, pay him in toys. That's why I have know. children. Pay him in You're toys. not working. That's why you pay me in toys. There you go. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Well, well, again, a uh, big shout out to uh, Solomon and uh, West Hempstead, New York, and the VFW. Those, those are the greatest generation who serve. God Definitely. bless America. God bless Custom Toys. God bless uh, Tiny Tim, wherever the fuck you is. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, thanks. I'm repeating you. Hey, and you're listening to The Plastic Empire. That's my Will Arnett voice. Do you want to watch uh, Arrested Development? Oh, I great. went to a period. And all I did was talk like this, and look, it's magic. It sounds much better on radio, because I look at like an asshole or something. Shit like that. <laughs> it's good. I know we're wrapped. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. That was awesome. That was that was great. That was fun. All right.